Now, Rishi Sunak has been forced to deny the Conservatives have a problem with Islamophobia today as he spoke out for the first time on the Lee Anderson controversy. The row over the former Deputy Chairman's rant about Sadiq Khan intensified after Cabinet members refused to call the Ashfield MP out for racism or Islamophobia, with Transport Secretary Mark Harper keeping the door open to restoring the Commons whip if Mr Anderson apologises. Let's bring in Monday night's panel for their reaction, because right here alongside me, journalist at Telegraph, Stephen Edgington, and author and journalist Laura Dodsworth. Very good evening to both of you. Thank you very much for joining us. What an absolute and utter shambles of a, of a week last week and now of a weekend, where you'd think the only two things that mattered in the whole world were Gaza and whether or not the Tory party is Islamophobic. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But in reality, there is, an, there is a much more important story here, Mike, that is being ignored. And that is that MPs are now having to have bodyguards mm. to protect them from extremists on the street. Yeah. And when I say extremists, I mean Islamic extremists. Let's yeah. be clear about that. Those are the words the Prime Minister couldn't tweet out right. because he refused to take the issue head on. Mm. I think that we've seen, I mean, with the murder of David Amos, for example, yeah. there is a real threat here posed by as I say, these people who are marching yeah. and so on and, and are supporting Hamas in some cases. Mm. We've recently seen convictions of people yeah. support, supporting Hamas, the terrorist group. So us banging on about Islamophobia because of some comments, sort of mis misfired comments from Lee Anderson, mm. um, is a complete distraction from a much more serious issue. It is. Mm. And of course, um, it was the Speaker of the House himself who actually said he didn't want to have blood on his hands last week. Mm. And that was the reason why he did that ridiculous manoeuvring, which caused all the trouble in the first place with all the different amendments. I'm not going to go into it all over again. But he was assured by, we think, either Keir Starmer or somebody quite close to Keir Starmer, that MPs' lives and certainly their safety was in jeopardy. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about Lee Anderson and we're going to talk about Lindsay Hall, but this is not what we should be talking yeah. about. What we should be talking about, the fact that while Lee Anderson's words were clumsy... Yeah, well, he says was, they were clumsy. Yeah, sure, and perhaps a bit incendiary towards Sadiq Khan. The fact is he expressed a sentiment that most of the British mm. public will get behind. Let's put what he said into a context within the month. So I think it was the day he said it, Tabridge was closed down. Yeah. And um, we had genocidal slogans emblazoned on Westminster. Yeah. And, and Mike, you know I'm never ashamed of this country. I'm proudly mm. patriotic. I love Britain. I love the British people. But on that day, I felt sick to the pit of my stomach. And when Lee Anderson put out his statement about it, he said he felt sick. Yeah. Now, that is a real emotional connection mm -hmm. that people believe. They, You know, it's not disingenuous. It's not playing politics. He really believed it. And I felt that too. I felt sad to right. my bones. I felt ashamed that our institutions allowed those horrible words mm. to go onto the mother of Parliament. Yeah. So there's a much bigger crisis here. When Lindsay Hoyle contorts parliamentary procedure and therefore democracy, because Islamists are threatening the lives of MPs, mm. it's because, not just because of an imported Islamism problem, Islamist extremists. Yeah. Let me make that clear in case anyone thinks I'm being anti-Muslim. Right. That's not just the problem. The problem is that our politicians and the speaker who should be upholding what Parliament is about have lost faith themselves in the institution. And if you lose faith in the mother of Parliament, you've lost faith mm. in this country. Yeah. And I was ashamed last week. I was as well. And we talked about all of this last week, Wednesday and Thursday, and how ridiculous the whole situation had become. But what we also learned over the weekend is that one of the guys speaking outside of Parliament, um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he's some Palestinian activist, and his basic um, sort of chant was, we're going to make them lock down Parliament. We should invade it. We should get in there and occupy Parliament. You know, so this guy is, is to all intents and purposes, if he was running a football um, march or if he was Tommy Robinson, he would have been arrested right there and then for causing havoc and potentially causing a breach of the peace. But he wasn't arrested. Uh, and in fact, I think the police might be having a look at what he said. But the police also said that from the river to the sea uh, can be a, cr a crime if you utter it in certain circumstances. But projecting it onto a, a, the Palace of Westminster and Big Ben apparently isn't a crime. Nonsense. And I the know. British public won't agree with that at all. Of course not. All these accusations of Isl Islamophobia are sounding increasingly like a discouragement from making any criticism at all not just of the religion, but of, of anything yeah. that's inconvenient. And do you know what it means? You know, when they try to equate Islamism with far-right terror threats, what that sounds like to me is actually just a war on mm. white working-class British people. It sounds classist, right. frankly, but we're not supposed to talk about that, no. are we? And do you know what the real threat is? 80% of live counter-terrorist police investigations are Islamist mm. extremists. Right. So and when this... you see from the river to the sea, yeah. everywhere, 
and weekly hate marches for, what is it now, five months, mm. calling for global intifada. Yes. That's the real threat. Well, exactly right. And, Stephen, all day today, for example, I've been seeing various different pundits, left-wing pundits mostly, going on about how safe London is, how great it is, how it's not in any way under siege, how Lee Anderson couldn't be more wrong. A couple of Tory MPs today said parts of Tower Hamlets are no-go areas. They are, mm -hmm. you know, and I know it because I don't live very far from there. Well, if you look as well what happened in Rochdale in mm. terms of this by-election where Gaza has dominated yeah. an election which is extraordinary in England. Some Have you seen the death war. threat to this Simon This is what Dancho. I was going to say. Yeah. It was exactly this, is mm. the Reform Party candidate um, was, was threatened, his life was threatened by, right. again, an Islamic extremist. And yeah. this just it goes to show, again, the issues that we're all talking about today. Right. It's not Islamophobia, it's the threats from Islamic extremism. Right. And I was speaking today with um, an historian, Robert Toombs, and we were talking about precedents in English history mm. as to whether mobs have been able to cow Parliament before. And he said the last time that this has happened was in the 1830s when mobs went around sort of violently uh, destroying London mm. in order to pass the Reform Act in Parliament. Yeah. So this hasn't happened in hundreds of years. Yeah. Left-wing journalists, as you say today, they're completely ignoring the fact that Parliament has just been cowed by right. um, mobs outside and harassing MPs and so on, this almost unprecedented mm. thing in the last 200 years. And instead, they're focusing on some silly words from Lee Anderson. Right. And they're sort of flash mobs. It's not just happening here. There was an incident in Stoke over the weekend um, where a bunch of Islamic um, you know, terrorists, for want of a better word, sort of broke into a, a, a meeting that was being held in the Conservative Club perfectly reasonable meeting being held, somebody shouting at people. There's been some um, shop up in Rochdale, I think it was, attacked by people because they're selling Coca-Cola, which apparently is now deemed to be in some way uh, anti-Islamic. I mean, it's just ridiculous what's going on and nobody seems to be wanting to talk about it. Yeah, and what we should be talking about, and I feel like banging my head on yeah, the desk no, about it really, is anti-Semitism. So last year, 2023, there were over 4,000 anti-Semitic incidents and 2,400 were in Greater London. Yeah. So Sadiq Khan responded to Lee Anderson's comments with how Islamophobic they were and said the great shame is that it will put Muslim people off entering politics. And I thought, sorry, this is a complete inversion mm. of what's really happening. We're going to have MPs who don't want to go into politics because of a genuine Islamist threat, which is... It's a genuine phys physical danger that they, yes. they could be under, not just rhetoric, not just rhetoric. And we've got Jews who don't feel like London is safe. Mm. You know, central London and, you know, Tower Hamlets and various areas are like no-go zones for them. Now, he's the police and crime commissioner. Right. What is he doing about right. it? Well, we have seen MPs, Tory MPs, have actually stood down because of threats to them in terms of in, when people in Jewish areas and yeah. things like that, where their offices have well, been Well, the Finchley MP is, is, is going. It's a great example. Mm. And this is an area where Lindsay Hoyle really hasn't shown leadership. Instead of standing up to mm. these threatening mobs, yeah. these Islamist extremists, he gave in to them yeah. last week. And this whole situation seems to be the wrong way around. Yeah, it really does. And also the definition is even a row, isn't it? Because you've got Kemi Badenoch today refusing to talk to Baroness Walsey, who, who is all over the Tory party, saying you must adopt Islamophobia as a term. She prefers to use the, the phrase Muslim hate which seems much more appropriate. And I was reading that there's an organisation called MEND. I don't know whether you know too much about them. Uh, they are uh, an organisation which is all about um, sort of promoting British Muslims and empowering and encouraging them uh, to be more actively involved in British media and politics. Well, I think they've succeeded, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like Muslim people are feeling particularly inhibited from entering the political arena. I'm not sure the way we've seen it happen in the last week is, is great. Right. But, yeah, this definition of Islamophobia is a real problem because the um, definition that Labour is proposing really includes pretty much any sort of criticism of anything Muslim whatsoever yeah. or perceived criticism. Well, it's a blasphemy law, isn't it? Any, anyone, yeah, anyone can say, well, I perceive that as right. Islamophobia, and it is. Right. This is madness. Right. And I think it is a total deflection from the real elephant in the room, which is genuine Islamist extremism, which we're all seeing playing out. So we, we already have it, uh, blasphemy laws in Britain. You, you could not, on this programme tonight, burn a Quran without being arrested because it would incite violence and so on and, and the police would yeah. claim... Well, hang on, we don't have blasphemy laws. We have de facto well, blasphemy laws. That's what I'm saying, laws. that's what I'm saying. We already have de facto... That's what I meant, sorry. 
we have to. I'm also not allowed to set fire to anything in here anyway, so I <laughs> do it, you know, obviously here. Well, but there's a, there's a bit of a disparity because if you went out and burned a Bible outside right yeah. now, you could do it completely fine. Right. If you burned a Quran, you couldn't do that because the police would arrest you under the mm. Public Order Act and say that you're right. inciting um, sort of disturbances of yeah. peace and things like that. Well, of course. I mean, we saw an incident at the weekend in Waterloo Station as well. I think it was football related, um, where there was some you know sort of punch ups going on. The police wading in with with you know head cracking you know truncheons punching people. You know, you've never seen them behave so differently than as they had behaved on um, Wednesday night last night, last week in, in Parliament, outside Parliament, and also at Tower Bridge, where they were just standing there sort of watching. I failed to see. Apparently, it's illegal to project anything onto the Houses of Parliament. I know people have done it in the past with sort of promotional activities, but you can easily arrest people for that. They just don't want to. That's, that's exactly it. You know, the sadness about all of this, really, is that Lee Anderson's comments we're a bit crude, a bit clumsy, but we're all talking about it and we're yeah. talking about the wrong thing. It's been a gift to the metropolitan elites, but I am 100% sure he's not out of kilter mm. with most of the, most of the British yeah. public. Well, I'm going to give my view on, on what he said a little bit later on in the show, but, but, but at least it's quite nice to see a politician who doesn't say something and then just immediately apologise because he gets pressurised yeah. to say he was sorry. At least he's sticking to his guns. Whether you agree with him or not, mm -hmm. I think he's done a great thing by actually putting his, his marker down to say, no, this is my opinion, this is what I think, I believe I'm right, I'm not going to say sorry, why should he? I agree. I loved it. It's electrifying. Mm. I mean, how terribly sad that that is the most electrifying thing we've got in politics mm. at the moment. But a politician refusing to kind of cravenly capitulate to the mob right. is so refreshing. It really is. No, no one believes these apologies when they do when, when no. it happens. When you try and when you cancel someone and you it's have all to a bit grovel. little Britain like, isn't it? You know, when I accidentally tripped mm. and found myself inside another man, and you go, <laughs> really? Did you? Are you really sorry? Is your wife really standing next to you and holding your hand and really, really uh, is still very happy with you? No, absolutely. Nobody believes a word of it. But the Tories even can't seem to get this right, can they? Because they can't agree on whether Islamophobia is a thing. They can't agree whether whether Lee Anderson is right, and they can't agree whether Rishi Sunak is wrong. I think the Tories are in a real mess over this whole situation, and particularly with the comments that Lee Anderson mm. made, it's really opened them up to a kind of criticism from the left and from, and from various right. different parties. But also, the Tories also recognise that, well, we have to recognise, the Tories are to blame for 14 years of mass immigration. And I think, let's not forget that I think the, these situations now in terms of Gaza, all of these protests, right. they're, they're novel, we shouldn't normalise them. No. And they have been part How of... long are they going to go on for? Because well, this well, war could go on for a year. Are we going to have a, a, a bloody protest every week? Possibly. I mean, this, happening, this is happening all across Europe and it seems that I think this really is a result of decades-long immigration policy mm. where we've been importing millions and millions of people from yeah. all sorts of countries where they care about these foreign wars far more than um, we do of as, course. as British people. Right. And, and, well, isn't it ridiculous that here we are, we're in the midst of sort of by-election seasons, there's by-elections going off right, left and centre, and the big issue seems to be what the hell we do about uh, Israel and, and, and the, Palestine. There's so many issues that face Britain at the moment. High taxes, um, massive amounts of yeah. debt, the NHS waiting list, right. all of these things that are impacting our domestic politics. And yet we seem to be spending every single week talking about Gaza, talking mm. about a foreign war, talking about Islamophobia, yeah. rather than the massive issues facing normal British yeah. people every day. Exactly right. But Absolutely in, staggering. In addition to that, you know, if, if you wanted to play what about tree, and I'm sure none of us like that, Where's um, where's the call for the one to two million Uyghurs in China yeah. to be re released well, there from isn't. detention? No. When well, I did this, when Prince William went banging on about it the other week, you know, he hasn't mentioned any of the other one hundred conflicts that he could have mentioned. He mentions the trendy one. Of course, he does.